Elliot Wolf, the Patriots director of scouting, has been New England's de facto GM since Bill Belichick's departure in January. He led the Pats through free agency in arguably the franchise's most impactful draft in 30 years. And as Wolf assessed and his own situation on Adam Schefter's podcast, he spoke about how he led the Patriots it was football a operations. Effort on our part. You know, at the end of the day, someone needed to make the call, and the Crafts entrusted that to me for this, you know, for the spring here. And I'm I'm grateful for that opportunity. We all sat down together and and you know worked together to set the board and create the board and make the best decisions possible for the Patriots. I feel like I was very prepared for it and thinking about the moment forever. The board falling pretty well for us and able to pick guys we wanted. It, that made it a lot easier, uh, but it was it was a lot of fun. So the timing of this general manager search, a little abnormal in the NFL world. Graz, I'm going to start with you here. What can you tell us about where things stand with the Patriots in naming a general manager? Well, interesting, Courtney, they've never had a, someone with the title of general manager in the 30 years that Robert Kraft has owned the team. Uh, Bill Belichick ran the show the whole time he was there. He had the powers of a GM without having the title. He was, his title was head coach. But uh, since they moved on from Belichick, the front office responsibilities have been split. You know, Elliot Wolf has been the guy, the front man, and he was in charge of the draft. Matt Groh was there, who's been a, a point man on some of the contract talks they've had uh, with players uh, during this time. Time. So I think I think Elliot Wolf is probably a, a strong candidate for the job. But as with any job uh, this high profile in the NFL, they have to interview external candidates. They have to interview minority candidates to satisfy the Rooney Rule. And until they go through that process, uh, it's really hard to see where, say where it will end. It's entirely possible Elliot Wolf comes out of this with a formalization of the role that he's kind of been occupying there the last few months. But obviously, there's a ways to go in terms of the. Interview process with other people before any of that can be finalized. Sam, a lot of changes within this Patriots locker room, within the coaching staff and the front office. How do the front office changes impact this team in the offseason? I think it makes the team stronger. Back in February, I was sitting at a table with about eight or nine different Patriots players and some of their wives, and you could tell that there was a strong sense of community, right? Matthew Slater had just announced his retirement, and so now he's taken on a role within that team, helping out the new coach in Gerard Mayo. But I think if I'm a player, there's a sense of excitement. Why? Because yes, we know the foundation has been laid, and yes, we have a young quarterback, but now each and every one of us have to do our jobs. What do I mean by that? I mean Hunter Henry, right? Be that security blanket is at, at tight end for your quarterback. I'm going offensive lineman. Caden Wallace, third round pick out of Penn State. You may have to step up and be the left tackle to protect the blind side of Drake May. Defensively, you got guys like Christian Gonzalez, Matt Judon. Judon's been there for some years. Dietrich Wise. Everyone gets to do their job with this new regime, but there's still this tight sense of community and culture. So I've sensed a, a feeling of excitement. We haven't seen business done in New England in any other way than Bill Belichick running the show booger for a really long time. So now that there will be somebody else calling the shots differently from that GM position, what are the most pressing needs that that person needs to address this year and then beyond? Courtney, that's a great question, and I'm going to get to it in one second. As soon as I give Acho a shout-out, hey, Acho, the Kentucky Derby was Saturday, man. You got your Kentucky Derby outfit on. Graz, you and I didn't get the memo today, did we? My man, I thought the Derby was on hey, Saturday, just, Courtney, Graz. I, Courtney and I just trying to bring up the level of, uh, of uh, dress on the show. That's it. Nothing, 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 nothing major. It, I yeah, I, I get it, but it is to, to answer that's, your question, that's my experience. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> to answer your question, Courtney, th there's a lot that needs to be done. This is a team that's void of talent. Yes, they get Drake May with the third overall pick, but right now, uh, Drake May is not scheduled to start, nor is he probably scheduled to play, if you really want to be honest. This team needs talent everywhere. Right now, you look at Jalen Polk, is Kendrick Bourne, K.J. Osborne, all being thrown to by Jacoby Brissett. It doesn't quite scare people, especially in the AFC, that's murderer's row. So I, I think if you're Elliot Wolf, who I think is going to ultimately be the GM, I think you got a lot to do defensively. They got some pieces on defense. You get the, the, your young corner, the first-round pick coming back. They, they re-signed Kyle Duggar. They have a couple pieces. But overall, 
This is a team, kind of like me and Graz on this show with Acho, we are a void of talent that Acho has presented us with with his Kentucky Derby suit today. Man, we are off to a hot start here on NFL Live. Uh, as you saw on that depth chart there, the Patriots can afford to be patient with Drake May. He is not listed there as QB1. He's only 21 years old. New England signed Jacoby Brissett to a one-year deal this offseason.